Just when you think you've seen it all, right? Well, welcome back to Weather for Weather Geeks, everyone, on this kind of remarkable Wednesday across the Mahoning and Shenango Valleys. Uh, we talked last evening about the possibilities with our wildfire smoke today, and kind of the worst-case scenario came true for us, the worst air quality we've had in at least a quarter of a century, and certainly uh, the worst uh, air quality of the 21st century thus far in uh, eastern Ohio and western PA. In fact, our air quality late this afternoon and early this evening is some of the worst in the world. Um, it was really bad yesterday, of course, out towards Chicago and Milwaukee. Today it was Detroit, Cincinnati, Columbus, Cleveland, Youngstown, Pittsburgh, all those places nearby uh, experiencing this really horrendous air quality. Now we're going to talk about what's going to happen in the future, but one thing uh, that we're keeping an eye on is this little punch of better air quality trying to work south out of... Uh, uh, parts of Ontario and Quebec, and whether that makes a visit overnight remains to be seen, but that would be a good thing. All right, I've had to monitor my social media, of course, pretty closely today. Uh, our weather's been quiet for months, honestly speaking. We had very little winter weather. We've had very little uh, severe weather in the springtime, so the comment sections on my uh, social media pages have been fairly quiet in recent months, but it's gotten pretty busy today, and uh, I have to, you know, it's, I feel it's my duty to keep my social media pages, my comment sections, as clean as possible. We don't do politics, we don't do personal attacks, and we certainly don't do conspiracy theories either. And this uh, graphic just illustrates how many fires have been burning uh, this week up in Canada. This isn't just one fire that raged out of control and was mismanaged or anything like that. There's lots and lots of fires up in Canada producing all of this vivid wildfire smoke. And this was the uh, scene outside this afternoon or early this evening as of this recording at 713 you can hardly see the skyline in Youngstown this is from high atop our transmitter tower a couple of hundred feet up in the air on the south side of Youngstown we're looking north towards downtown here it looks like fog right it looks like just a foggy evening but this is all wildfire smoke and haze now compare this to what the scene should have looked like this afternoon this was a nice day a few weeks ago uh, I think this was late May or early June beautiful day unlimited visibility this is kind of what our sky would have looked like today if not for the presence of the uh, smoke. We would have seen a decent amount of sun today and a very comfortable afternoon. Mentioned uh, my comment sections and we don't do conspiracy theories and things like that. I've had to, you know, remove some comments about, you know, how, you know, they're trying to poison us and those sorts of things. There's actually a pretty good, not good, but a reasonable uh, scientific explanation behind the smell a lot of people experienced today. A lot of comments today about how plasticky the smell of this smoke is, how kind of chemical smelling it is, and not necessarily like you would expect with a wildfire smoke. It doesn't smell like a campfire, in other words, in, in some circumstances. Some people have reported more of a campfire smell, but some, you know, think it smells very chemically or, or plasticky. All right, so here's the explanation, a little bit of chemistry here. Uh, fires emit what are called VOCs, volatile organic compounds. Now, most VOCs are the ones that give off kind of that campfire smell, but those typically kind of get burned away by incoming solar radiation. So the sun's energy breaks down a lot of those VOCs pretty quickly. The longer lasting VOCs are more in the chemical realm, benzene, formaldehyde, things like that. Those can last longer and aren't as easily burned off by the incoming solar radiation. And as smoke travels farther and farther away, from its origin site, don't forget we're pretty far away from these Canadian wildfires, you know, more of those chemical smells uh, outlast kind of the campfire VOCs, and that's why, you know, more often than not when you're this far away and the smoke is this thick um, and near the ground, when you're this far away from the uh, fires, uh, it can have kind of more of a chemical-like smell rather than like a campfire. Now our air quality, there was some modicum of improvement for a time earlier on, <coughs> pardon me, today around midday, it's actually gone downhill again late this afternoon, early this evening. It's going to stay pretty bad as long as that, you know, pocket of decent air quality to our north does not work in. The reason is, as is typical at night, we get an atmospheric inversion setting up. Um, air continues to rise and you get more mixing as long as the surrounding air is colder than the air pockets that are trying to rise. Well, when the air aloft gets warm, or warmer than it does at the surface, like we when we get in the evenings and into the overnights usually, then you get an inversion. It's, it's kind of like a cap or a lid in the atmosphere, and that kind of traps anything that's in the air below it uh, near the ground, and that includes any sort of particulates or pollutants in the air, uh, moisture in the air, 
Um, sometimes uh, clouds get trapped by this inversion, of course. Uh, this is very, very common. Uh, we see this, in fact, most nights. Some nights the inversion is pretty strong, sometimes it's pretty weak. Not expecting anything super strong tonight, but it'll be strong enough to trap a lot of these pollutants in our air tonight. Now, how's it going to look going forward? There's good news and bad news here. The good news is Thursday's concentration of wildfire smoke near the ground where we are is likely to be a little bit lower, somewhat lower, than today. It's hard to get much worse than today. Today was our worst day for air quality in a long time. So tomorrow has almost no choice but to be somewhat better. It's still going to be pretty bad though. The air quality tomorrow will be such that anyone with asthma, COPD, breathing issues, respiratory issues, treat it like you did today. Take it real easy. Don't spend a lot of time outdoors. Certainly if you have those kinds of health issues, don't exert yourself outdoors. Don't go for a run. Uh, don't do a lot of yard work, things like that. Now, if you're a normal, healthy-ish, younger person, um, you can be outdoors in situations like this evening and during parts of tomorrow, but it's still a good idea. It's good practice to uh, restrict your exertion as much as you can. Don't work for too long outdoors. Don't exert yourself uh, for any reason outdoors too long, even if you're a pretty healthy individual. On to the actual weather. If it were not for the haze and smoke today, it would have been a nice day. The humidity was down. Those dew points dropped out of the 60s into the 50s as expected. We would have had a good deal of sunshine out there today. And, uh, well, again, that's what it would have looked like had our uh, day gone a little differently for today. The dew points across the region, uh, generally mid-50s to upper 50s to lower 60s. The uh, pattern over the next few days, aside from the uh, smoke and air quality concerns, uh, will revolve around keeping track of disturbances coming out of the middle of the country and riding up and over a stout ridge of high pressure over the Gulf Coast region. The severe weather risk for the rest of today and into no tonight is primarily focused in the upper Midwest. Then there's going to be a couple of complexes of storms that probably do one of these numbers um, on Thursday. I think we're going to miss this Thursday during the daylight hours. We should be dry. But a pretty good complex of storms might impact Chicago, Indianapolis, Louisville, maybe, maybe as far north as Cincinnati. But then beyond tomorrow and into Friday and parts of the weekend, there may be a northward shift a little bit into this main storm track. I still don't think Friday's a washout by any stretch of the imagination. I, I don't really don't think Saturday or Sunday will be a washout, but there's going to be periods in which we'll be under the gun for some showers and some storms if conditions are right. Uh, if we get enough sunshine, especially before any storms decide to roll through, maybe there are some strong ones, maybe even a flash flooding risk. But today's only Wednesday. It's hard to pinpoint, you know, things too exactly at this distance. Just know if you have outdoor plans this weekend that occasionally the weather is going to be threatening. Uh, but there's going to be dry intervals as well. So here's a look at that complex on Thursday, diving southeastward. We might get grazed late Thursday night, early Friday by a, a, a cluster of showers and storms. The current run of the modeling would suggest it may be more aimed at Toronto and Buffalo. Don't know if that's right just yet, but it's possible we get grazed by that first thing Friday morning. Somewhat better chance of a uh, passing shower or storm Friday afternoon into early Friday evening. And then Saturday likely starts dry, but by the end of the day, yeah, there's going to be a possibility of some, some gully washers in parts of northeast Ohio and western PA as well. So rain chances elevated for the weekend, and we've added rain chances to our Monday forecast. The evolution of things is a little bit slower now. We're going to keep Tuesday, the 4th of July, dry for now. Stay tuned, though. Today's trends being slower meant we had to add something Monday into Monday night. Hopefully that trend doesn't continue and we have to add something into the 4th of July forecast. At this point, we're going to keep the forecast dry. I'll tell you, though, I think we are uh, done with abnormally dry weather for the foreseeable future. Our uh, drought probably peaked a couple of weeks ago. Um, this week's drought monitor will be updated on Thursday. We should be out of the moderate drought. Pardon me, moderate drought in most of our area with that update on Thursday. And then it looks like a pretty active pattern going forward uh, for the start of July. And actually, July as a whole may be one of our more active periods in terms of rain. This is today's 6 to 10 day outlook from the Climate Prediction Center. Pretty active pattern as we kick off the month of July. So we'll make up for some lost time, it looks like, as we go into midsummer. All right, long video from me tonight. Thanks for watching. Thanks for your patience, everyone. Welcome new followers. If you're a new follower uh, of mine on social media because of uh, the interesting stuff I've been posting over the last day or so. Welcome, and if you're new to this video, I post this at most evenings that I work with the exception of some Fridays in the summer and then during high school football season. We call it Weather for Weather Geeks, but even if you don't think you're a geek, hopefully you'll get a kick out of these videos. Again, usually online. Most most evenings that I work, they're usually online by about 
730. Again, thank you for watching and have a great rest of your Wednesday night.